Well gone massive, I am FZBA. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Alright, so I got a few requests. I think it could be one or two requests to talk about foods that I eat to restore my hair from hair loss. Alright? So we're gonna have to do this as in, in series because I would not be able to cover every single thing that we eat to grow back my hair. And so in this particular video, we will be going through the staples that I eat for hair growth. Now, family, when I'm eating, I have three things in mind, right? The first thing is whatever I'm eating or most things that I'm eating must have life. And when we say it must have life, meaning it must procreate after its kind. So you have natural foods and you have organic foods. Our natural foods like our mangoes, Julie mango, East Indian mangoes, those fruits are actually modified, but what? They grow naturally, nobody has to do anything to them. But the only thing with those fruits, family, is that they will not recreate or procreate after their kind. If them fall to the ground, you will not get a Julie, you will not get an East Indian mango. But they are natural, so that's one way I eat. Organically, I try to eat things now that produce after themselves, so like our okras, sorrel, gungu peas, Kalalu, those things once you put them in the earth they are going to recreate after their kind so that's one way or one thing that i think about when i'm eating the second thing is i must eat close to the source so for most of my foods because remember now we have import and export trades and some things we would not have readily available in our country like garlic for instance so and some of the times onions we don't always have onions right throughout the year right so for some things family if i go to the market and i see two things for instance irish potatoes one imported or one and the, the local one 100 percent of the times i'm going to choose local now if the local is not available and it's something like irish or apples or something like that i'm definitely not going to choose it local and that is eating close to the source now here so now we're gonna go a bit biblical and a little bit of chemistry in this one the third way i try to eat is remember that when god created the earth it's the sixth day that he created man so the number of man is six when i look at the periodic table the element that is number six is carbon yes family man or bodies human beings are made up mainly of the element carbon and so that tells me one thing if i'm gonna heal my body or if my body is gonna heal i have to eat whatever comes from the earth now we are going to go into 10 things yes guys 10 things that i eat to recover from hair loss now i noticed that i've not been asking you guys to do this and then the channel kind of slack off a bit so here what family i'm going to stop here and ask that you remember to like the video subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed and also share this information with the other women and men who you know are experiencing hair loss so let's get into those 10 things so number one plantings and bananas so plantains and bananas contains vitamin C, potassium, magnesium, vitamin B6, vitamin A, and most importantly, iron. Now for that extra boost of iron, guys, I usually just make a tea from the banana. And I share that on my channel, so you can check that out. So I make a tea every now and then. Or what I do as well, I cut a leaf either from the plantain or from the banana and I consume the sap and that just gives me an extra boost of iron but before you even try this please ensure that you know the source of the plant and that it has not been sprayed with any chemicals so I also use the ripe fruits the ripe plantain and the ripe banana I use them in their raw state and I use those to make my smoothies I usually try to have as much bananas and plantains in my smoothies so number two is arrowroot yes family you saw me reaping some arrowroot the other day now arrowroot is very rich in b vitamins potassium and folate and also iron guys so i usually use the juice to make the porridge number three yams and yampi 
now some of you might not know what yampis are or what a yampi is but a yampi is the seed that grows on the vine of the yam right so i usually use the yampi because that's loaded with nutrients and i consume a variety of yams so whether I eat white yam or yellow yam number four moringa drumsticks yes family some of us just eat the leaves or we will use the oil but the drumsticks are a rich source of iron vitamin c vitamin e vitamin a and to top it up they also have anti-inflammatory properties so what i do i just use these in my soups now number five bulgur yes that thing that every jamaican child in the 50s and 60s used to get as part of their lunch but them did really hate this so much bulgur it has so many amazing benefits and so for me in the very early stages especially of my recovery from hair loss what i did was to replace rice entirely with bulgur so i cut out rice out of my diet i've reintroduced rice now but i don't consume it as much as i used to so the bulgur as i said it has a lot of nutrients and it's very high in protein iron phosphorus zinc magnesium manganese you hear that guys potassium and calcium and so how i usually do this as i said i would replace it with the rice so i cook it like rice i make sure it's seasoned properly and i also use it to make porridge and guys the porridge delicious the man on the need to try that bulgur porridge so number six is one that a lot of persons don't have enough of well except if you eat a lot of bammies right and this is cassava now cassava is one of those starches i never really liked but i've grown to love it and so i have more of that because it really helps with collagen production it is also packed with protein calcium magnesium and it is a rich source of vitamin c and folate yes guys folate is one of those essential minerals that we need to have in our body however with the cassava though there's one downside you can't store it at room temperature for long periods and so it needs to be frozen in order to preserve it so as i said the cassava is used to make bammies and i would also have it that way or i just have it as a part of my meal the next one is potatoes both sweet potato would i make have sweet potato pudding or me just i go cook up my, my sweet potatoes and irish potatoes now what one of the guys in the market told me is that the local potato the local irish potato is actually called carish i don't know how true that is but i that him say and so what i usually do i usually like have my regular creamed potatoes or i boil the potato and i use it to make a juice or a punch number eight irish marsh or sea moss this is one of my childhood favorites guys and i did not take it out of my diet i've always had it in my diet but when the hair loss thing hit me, I started consuming a lot more Irish mush. When I'm preparing the Irish mush, I ensure that it has these three main ingredients. Guys, you can't leave it out. If you want the most out of your Irish mush, it has to have these three main ingredients. It has to have linseed or what we call flaxseed, isinglass, and gum arabic. Number nine is black rice. And I also had a little bit of quinoa. Um, I tried making porridge with the quinoa, but that never worked out. But guys, the black rice porridge, that is mm, gone to bed. Tastes really good. And now 10 and final, guys. Cocoa and dasheen. Now, cocoa and dasheen, these are similar. I still have not been able to tell the two apart. But these, I tell you, I use them in my soups. I don't really like the taste of these, but I use them in my soups. And guys, these are a rich source of folate again folate coming up vitamin b6 vitamin k vitamin c iron again guys if you're going to be battling hair loss you need lots of iron and magnesium potassium and here what the coke and sheen also have omega-3 and 6 coke and sheen they have a lot more nutrients so feel free to do your own research now there are a few things that i also did in terms of my diet I cut out a few things right 
and so these things were pretty hard for me to let go of but i had to because these are things that cause inflammation in the body so number one dairy especially dairy milk i have cheese every now and then but not as often but i definitely ditch dairy cow's milk guys and what i did was to replace that with coconut juice now other things that i had to like just really let go off guys and as i said this was very hard shrimp yes guys my take out the shrimp out of my diet oysters conch lobster crab and pork so family these are a few of the things that i got rid of out of my diet because yes they those things contribute to the buildup of inflammation in the body you also asked for me to share with you what my meals look like for a week well while this is not a week i'm just going to be sharing a few of the dishes that i normally have and guys my diet is a lot of porridge a lot of soup so as you can see here in this photo i uh i have plantain porridge and guys i have to have my moringa powder on or in my porridge and then sometimes i mix it up i might do like plantain and peanut porridge or banana and peanut porridge or just peanut porridge to get that protein and here you can see i have a lot of vegetable in my meals a lot less meat but i do eat meat um, I just ensure that I know the source of my meat most of the times not all the time But most of the times I know the source of my meat and The meats that I usually I have most is chicken and fish and guys you see me on the beach Before I have a video with myself on the beach purchasing fish I do ensure that I get my fish from the source that way I'm sure that there is no formaldehyde or embalming food or whatever them call it on my fish so these are just a few of my meals that i'm showing you here what i'd have for lunch and dinner and guys my cutoff time for meal for the day is at three o'clock that's when i have my last meal for the day i leave you here now thank you much for watching and i will see you in the next video remember to drop your comments in the comment section i'll be only too happy to respond to you